Um, I'm gonna open the meeting mats talk. Oh, good, everything finally passed here. All right. So, how are you guys doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. What about you, John? I'm doing good. I've got a meeting from 9 to 12 today, so it's going to be a, a long one. Uh, how was your uh, report? Uh, how was what? Uh, you had a performance report, right? Oh, well, we're, it's sort of like a, um, an ongoing thing. Um, so I like... The way it works is we um, we write up basically like what we did and then what we're going to do, um, and that's sort of like all there is to the performance report. Um, it's kind of this it's this they they have this new system and we're all sort of like not so sure about this new system and how it works. Um, but I mean, I think I think it'll be okay. Um, but yeah, thanks for asking. Um, let's see. So, did you take a, a look at the uh, data class uh, error? Uh, I did not. I have not had a chance to look at that. Um, I was trying to clean up some stuff because um, I realized that we have our examples um, on the website, and oftentimes you may not actually be able to copy paste from those um, because we don't. Um, for example, let's see. This is sort of what I realized what was going on this weekend, and so this is what I was up to. But so short answer, no. Um, basically, what I realized is that on some of these, for example, like here, you can't copy paste this because there's no import async IO, there's no import train, there's no import SLR model. I I was gonna say the same thing today to you. Yeah. I was having the same. I okay. had to see where to import everything from. Okay, so well, so yes, we've we've figured this out, and I think I've solved the problem. Um, I may have created some problems in the process, but we will see. Um, the tests are passing. I want to run a few more little tests before I merge everything, but I think I went through it and I fixed every single example here. Um, so they all should be able to be copy pasted into uh, into their own file. So. Uh, And so we both noticed over the weekend that we can't copy paste most of the code examples um, over the weekend. John uh, went through and made all the code examples. Copy pasteable. Okay. Um, this includes, so this is another thing. So this um, includes, or this PR will include a commit which exports everything um, out of the top level module. And what that means is, is you can now do from DFFML import star um, and get everything in DFFML um, with a few exceptions. The exceptions are that train accuracy uh, predict um, and high level functions uh, come from uh, high level rather than no async. So if you want no async, you have to be explicit. to import from there. Okay. Um, yep, and 
that is just a bad. Um, so, so that that's what I was doing this weekend because um, it ended up being sort of a heavier lift than I thought. Um, but I will try to. So I need to. Um, John still owes Sakshan a uh, uh, debugging on the. Um, let's see, what is this? What are we calling this one? Um, the unified config config PR. Um, and then uh, John still owes. Yash, um, help with subflows in should I? I was hoping to get that one, but I have this. So the reason I didn't do that one is the reason this one didn't get done is because uh, John's introducing this because there's going to be a new uh, function in high level dot py called run which is responsible or which runs data flows um, and so I was going to use that function um, in doing that patch but uh, so this should be basically this, should, this is coming down the pipe um, and uh, as soon as I do some last validation here then I'll go ahead and merge it um, and then there'll be this high-level run function and stuff. Um, and the examples will be fixed. And what else? Um, uh, what else happened here? Oh, we're getting close to 600 commits. Um, oh, yeah, there was some... Oh, there was a race condition in the data flow stuff that was screwing things up sometimes. So I fixed that. Um, yeah. So that's the only other interesting thing here. All right. So, uh, did you guys have anything you wanted to um, uh, that? Uh, so, Sakshom, are you basically stuck on the uh, on on the um, um, on the unified config stuff, or did you have anything else you were working on? Oh uh, yeah, you gave me the reprocessing source to oh, yeah. work on it. That's right. Yeah. How's that going? Have so, you had a chance, or? Yeah, I I made a commit on my own repository. If you can check if I'm going on the right path, and cool. And also, I need some explanation on how we can how we'll add the inputs and the data and how will the data flow and everything will work. Great, great, great. This will be great. Very exciting. All right, let's see. Process source, nice. Okay. Source data flow features. Looking good. Update. All right, so. Okay, self dot source. Self dot source. All right, so um, quick thing here. So uh, similar. Let me let's grab the DB source real quick and, and look at that. Um, so DFML, DB. Oh, I guess source DB. Source. Okay. So, um, now maybe this this one may have have an issue if this is not the way it's being done. Okay, actually, this does kind of have an issue. Ah, damn, I didn't see this when we did review here. Um, mm, 
Yeah. Yeah, we probably want this. Okay. So. Okay, so there's one thing. I guess I didn't catch this when we did review of this guy. Um, but so similarly to how you do this a enter and a exit and you create a new. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, well. I can't do a suggestion, but um, similarly to how you do A enter and A exit and how you basically create a new context for the source, um, you're going to want to create, so, so well, you don't create a new context, you enter the context of the source here, right? So the source is already instantiated when it exists in the config. Um, you enter the context and you set that equal to self.source. Now when you're within um, uh, the your df preprocess source context, you're going to want to basically wrap um, the, the, you're going to want to check out a context of the parent source. Um, so self.parent.source, and then you do, um, let's see. Okay, so this is what it looks like, basically. Um, and let me pull up that. Um, oops. So, with the double context entry pattern, right, so we enter, this is where we're entering the first context, so this A enter, every time you start the with block, you're hitting the A enter method, um, and every time you end the with block, you hit the A exit method, um, so what we're doing here is we're basically saying, you know, start the with block, the async with block on the source, um, and then call assign that to self.source, and here we're basically... Uh, doing the second um, with block. So within the context, since we're wrapping, we're wrapping the source and we're wrapping this source context. So within our new source context, we need to say, okay, await self.parent.source and then we call it to create this context object, right? That's when we get a new instance of this context uh, for, the, for the source that we're wrapping. Um, and then we enter that. Con the the we we do that basically we start the async with block on that by calling a enter um, and then we call a exit here. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So basically, then what that's going to avoid is you won't have to do this every time. You can just access it as self dot sctx. Okay. Okay. That that is better. Okay. Cool. And then yeah, so this one will be. Um, oh, what happened here? Yeah, let's just, I'll just put it here and you're gonna indent it one less. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's what it's gonna that's what it'll end up looking like um, after you after you do this. Um, so let's see what else is going on here. Um, let me make it full screen again. Okay, so and then let me also make notes about that, so uh, so, noticed that the DB source is creating a new um, context during every method. Body of every method. Uh, this is something we should change. Um, uh, we instead want to just put that there. So we instead want to create a new uh, um, source context for the source we're wrapping when we enter the new source. Enter, oh, okay, this is a lot of doubly 
doubly loaded terms here. We would still want to create a source context for the source we're wrapping when we enter our new sources context. And then here's the example. Okay. Um, Um, and then let's see what else we're we looking at here. Okay, though well, this is what you've got right now. So let me just take a look at this. Um, let's see. Uh, one second, I gotta pull my nose in one. Okay, so um, let's see. So you create the source context, you create the features. I believe that, god damn it, I keep trying to hit suggestion. I don't think there's an async for here. Um, I think this is gonna be, uh, yeah, I'm pretty dang sure that this features is just a, features is just a list, I'm pretty sure. Okay, um, let's see. yeah, you guys can hear me, okay. Um, and then this looks good. The only comment I have is that I think we have a util function to do this kind of thing. Um, where did it go? Let's see. DFFML, util, um, data, I believe. Um. Okay, this one doesn't. Matter. Yeah, this isn't that helpful right now. Okay. Mm. We'll just. Uh, this is this is for typing stuff. So. Yeah. Okay, this looks good. Let's do this. Past features inputs, correct way to ask John. Right, okay, we're looking for all the records and we're in records. So we grab every record and Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. This uh, looks the good. inputs it is I don't think it's correct. What? The inputs did. Yeah, it's not quite correct, but that's okay. We'll we'll fix that in a second here. So, um, let's see. And of course, yeah, the next thing I would suggest you do is, of course, write write some kind of test case here. Um, and you probably want to write your own source test case. You probably don't want to derive from that one in testing source. Um, so, because this is pretty specific. Um, let's see. Wait. Okay. Um, okay. This looks good there. The self.parent.data flow is correct. This is correct. This if, only this is not self.record. It's, of course, um, it's going to be uh, just record. Um, so. Uh, and does record dot evaluated? I don't believe. Uh, record has evaluated. I don't think it returns record though.
Yeah, it doesn't return the record, though. We could change it to return the record, but eh. um, it might be good to do that, I guess. Okay. Um, so, yeah, basically, then you're going to want to do... So, yeah, record.evaluate doesn't return the record, so we're going to do evaluate it, and we're going to do yield. Um, okay, and then inputs. So, um, okay, there's, okay, so just, 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 um, not to confuse you, but, um, there's, I just want to let you know about something that we're going to do in the future. Um, so there's an open issue um, to have this memory orchestrator dot, or to have the running of a data flow accept a asynchronous um, iterator as the um, as the input. Um, and when we get that, basically what we're going to do is we're going to be um, we're basically just going to wait wait for each uh, uh, we're we're going to wait. We're going to have the run method itself do this loop over whatever we pass it in, and then it'll add these inputs. So what we'll end up with here is basically like um, uh, we'll end up with if um, um, how do I explain this? Um, but we'll basically end up with like when the orchestrator runs, we'll pass it this generator function that's going to Mm, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard to explain. But, uh, so sorry about that. But okay. So for now, what we're going to do is we can take this. Um, let me just write it here real quick because um, I'm going to need Vim. Okay. Can you see my screen well enough? Yes. Okay, cool. Can you uh, zoom it a little bit? Yeah. Is that better? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. So, so I'm just going to scoot all this in and stuff just like we're... Um, Okay, just like we have that source context already. Um, okay, so... So this is basically what it's going to look like here. Is um, actually maybe we can just sort of take this and make it all one. I don't know if that'll make it cleaner or not, but let's see what it looks like here. Okay, so we pass the data flow to run, and then we pass a dictionary where the keys are going to be all the record keys, um, and not records, but record. So we think for record, record, feature name, yeah, feature name, okay. So 
we say here, give the first argument is the data flow, the second argument is this dictionary, where we're basically going to have a dictionary that contains every single record from the subsource. Um, and uh, so the key is going to be, um, let's see. Oh, actually. Um, this is just going to give you the... Yeah, we could do this, I guess. Um, let's see. Um, there's two ways. So basically, there's two ways we can do this. We can... The way that I was hoping to do this is we take the... Oh, well, we can actually do that, can't we? Okay. Um, so there's a couple ways we can do this. We can... Um, go through this async for it. Let me just write the other one so you can see what the options here are. Um, we could go through the records and for each record, we just give, uh, we do this, right? We say, um, we say, okay, we we loop through the records, and for each record, we just create a dict of a, a single dict, and or well, we don't even need it, the dict. We can just say, um, we can just give it a list in this case, right? And we've got okay, so this is your list of inputs for this record, right? And this part stays the same, and we do. I guess we'll just do this for now. Um, so yield. Okay, so we go through all the features and we create, and we could probably, you know, you could probably do this somewhere else um, so that you're just doing a lookup here. Um, and you say, okay, give me the value is going to be whatever, you know, the record stored as the value for that feature name, right? And so that is going to be um, this, this call right here, right? So if I call, if I have this... Um, Reload the page. Okay, wow. Well, come on. All right, whatever. Um, so if I have this record example with the features of dead beef, and I say, oops, this is features. Yeah, if I have this record and I say feature and I pass the feature name, then I get beef, right? So I get the value. Um, so we're going to go through and we're going to say, okay, go through all the, the this, this is a generator that basically creates this input objects. And... Um, yeah, we grab each, the value for each one is the corresponding value for whatever feature name we're on. And then we create the definition where the name is the feature name and the primitive is whatever the data type is. You got that exactly right. Um, the, the alternate, alternate way, way that we could do this is, let's see. Um, The alternate way that we could do this is we basically and but the, but this one so the the way that this works is we create a new memory orchestrator every single for every single iteration of this record loop right now this, this is, is sort of the ideal, ideal way, way that we would do this where um, well this is not quite the ideal because we're generating this giant uh, this giant dictionary here um, but we'll solve that sort of in the future by by just passing a generator that sort of creates these lists of inputs on the fly. That's what I was trying to explain earlier. Um, but so for now, we could do this, um, where we basically were creating the orchestrator once, and we're passing every single record to it. Um, now, when we pass every single record to it, um, it um, it's going to evaluate them all at once, but they're going to come out out of order. Um, they may not come out in the same order that they came in. Um, and basically, whenever they're done, we're going to need a way to grab the record um, from the... You can you can actually create a context instead of these... Uh, what this does is it creates a what's called a string input set context. Um, and so basically all of these... This array of inputs runs under the... Con under Basically, this array of inputs is not allowed to coexist with any other inputs that are for different record keys. So 
this array of inputs is only allowed to intermingle with other inputs that are supposed to that are that are within this record key's scope. Um, and so, uh, so they all basically that that what ends up happening is that they all run at once. Um, and we'd have to create another context object um, because this is creating a string input set context. What we'd want to do is we want to create a record input set context. Uh, that's something that has been also an open uh, for a while. But the so this is nice because it evaluates all them all at once. But it's not so nice because if you have a really giant source, um, now we're going to end up creating this dictionary where we we pull the entire source into memory, which is like the point of this is that we're never we never want to like well okay the problem is right now the problem is that most of our things actually do pull the entire source into memory um but in the future the idea is that we never want to pull the entire source into memory that's not something that we that we want to be doing it's just something that we happen to be doing right now um so i think in this case we probably want to go with this first approach um, especially since we don't have that generator support yet when we do get the generator support yet we're going to sort of change it to this syntax here um, so that we're evaluating all of them at once um, does that make sense uh, yes uh, the first choice is better okay yes okay so and let me just uh so i'll 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 post this and, and then well I'll post yeah I'll just post this here and then um, uh, you can you can make the, the other modifications because um, I think I, I okay. forgot some stuff here I think I, I forgot the self on the source context and stuff um, uh, let's see I'll just delete these guys and we'll post this whole thing here. Make sense? Yes, this does make sense. Okay, I think this is correct. Um, cool. Yeah, nice job on this. This is you're on the right track here, definitely. So. Okay. Yeah, so what uh, after this? Um, well, you're gonna want to write a bunch of test cases for this. Um, okay. And that's probably gonna take you a little bit. So. Yeah. So you're gonna want to write and uh, yeah, write, write, write a few test cases. So let me make a note. So write. A few test cases uh, have, uh, make sure you test with at least two different data flows. All right. Um, okay. let's see. The remap operation. Okay, um, and hey, right, this this is an operation, an output operation that I found I made a while ago that was helpful for a situation sort of like this, um, and I think this is where you can find it. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, it basically takes a subflow um, and runs that subflow and then renames things um, to get you whatever you want the right names to be. And so obviously you might you might end up with like if you do if you call get single and stuff like that, um, you might end up with right if you call get single. So you run you run some sequence of operations. Um, you run, you run some data flow and the output data types are, you know, the, the, out, the definitions that you care about using as the features now might be of some other name, right? That it isn't the original feature name now. Um, so now what we are going to do is you'd want to run get single where you pass like, um, for example, this one, we wanted the formatter string, um, the, the output um, from this thing. So we wanted this 
message, right? So and we want to turn that into, um, so, oh yeah, we want to call that response, right? So this, what we're trying to do is we're, we're going to have this data flow output a dictionary and that dictionary is going to have, it's, it's going to have a, it's going to be a, a uh, it's going to have response be equal to whatever the, um, whatever the uh, output of this um, formatter um, operation was, um, because that was actually message. And so we're basically just renaming message to response, because if we called get single, we would end up with this dictionary that has message equals whatever the message was, whereas what remap does is it lets us say, okay, set message, turn, turn message into response, basically, so change the key there, um, and that might be helpful for you, so. Okay. Okay. Let me just make a note of this. Okay. That, that operation still needs a example usage in the docs. But yeah, okay. So is this enough to keep you going here then? Yes, thank you. All right, great. Cool. Nice work. This is going to be really cool. Okay. All right. Um, so who else is on here? Oh, wow, we got a full house. Um, how are you guys doing? Himanshu, do you want to go next? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, I checked out how to add the Anaconda thing, so, hello? Yeah, so you checked out how to add what? Hello? Hello? We can hear you. Oh, no, I think it's his speaker, er, hey, Himanshu? Okay, so in the, yeah, yeah, so I tried with Anaconda. Oh, with Anaconda, oh, yes, Am great, yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Um, yes. Uh, yes, so in Docker, I tried with Anaconda and Wapel Rabbit installation is perfect with Anaconda. So All right, there are great. No issues with that. So I was, uh, I was able to run it. So now I'm uh, trying to add that in scripts and let me see if I can do that. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you is there any way we can run a whole CI locally, like without? So that's another open open issue right now, and if we Can end up, it up, yeah, there's there's I think there's an open issue for that. Let's see. Um, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, run CI test locally. All right, so, and if you end up um, putting everything, so basically if you change the, if you change like, so, let's see. Here's a project from two, this, roll the tools. Um, actually, maybe I'll just point you at this one. This is, okay. So, Okay. Oh, this one runs Docker within that. That's not ideal. Um, let's see. I think there's a better one. This is another project that I work on. Uh, let's see. They have a pretty good way of doing this. Um, okay. So yeah, so the way that they do this is basically they provide, um, they, um, 
they have a few scripts and they have the thing that runs within Docker, which would be for us like run.sh. Um, and then they have the thing that basically kicks off the Docker container. And that way um, you can, um, that way um, basically what we can do is if we had this extra script that sort of sat on top of run.sh, that was the one that kicked off run.sh, we could just um, start a Docker container, you know, start the Anaconda container um, and have it kick off run.sh um, within it. And that way we could now start running this locally because we don't have any way to run it locally at the moment. Um, because, well, the other thing is you probably don't want to because it, what it will do is after, remember how we got rid of the virtual envi stuff? That was sort of, uh, we, we used to be able to run it locally because it would create a virtual environment. Now it just sort of like clobbers all over everything. Um, and so it's not really the best to run things locally. Um, but you could sort of modify it basically if you wanted to use, I don't know if you can use, um, so you could create a wrapper script uh, which runs, would run .ci slash run .sh within a Docker file, or within a Docker container, the Anaconda one. Um, uh, so yeah, you could create a wrapper script which would run the CI run within a Docker container, um, uh, and then have the CI or have GitHub actions run that uh, script instead of run.sh. Uh, this would make it so that we could um, run the CI tests locally too because they're in containers. Um, or you could see if there's a way to install Anaconda within the uh, GitHub Actions environment and not fix the issue of no, no way to run CI locally. Um, so basically, you could just now that you know that Ana everything works with Anaconda, you can sort of you you have two options. You could you could use that Docker file where you or you can use that Docker image where you know everything works, um, and you can make it so that the CI runs that image, and then consequently we can also run that locally now because you know we can all run those Docker images locally. Um, and then you fix that issue in the process, or you could sort of, um, you could just try to install Anaconda within, or find some kind of Git. I think there are other GitHub actions out there. There might be even a, an official one that, that would give you Anaconda. Actually, I think there was not, I think was the issue. Um, but there may be now, you never know, like they may have written one. Um, or you could just figure out how to install it within the GitHub actions environment, and then, you know, not fix the issue where we can run yeah. it locally. Yeah, I yeah, I checked that. I checked that. How to install it within GitHub Actions? So they they do have one. And, uh, maybe I will figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you got you have two you have two options uh, there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have it. Uh, I saw few of the uh, reports they are using it. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Sweet. Um. Uh. Is there anything else there? Um. Or sort of. Is there anything you need um input on there? Or? Other than that, or is that is that good? Uh, no, this is fine. This. All right, great, thanks. Just with the dogs. I... And cool. Just a the dogs. Uh, sorry, you cut in and out there. I didn't hear what you said. 
uh, that's all. Uh, I just saw the docs. Uh, if you go in the operation, then there is a prop. Okay, let's see. Like, we don't have it. If you check the operations plugins. Oops. Sorry for this. Side. No worries. No worries. Let's see. Okay, so where are we looking here? What are we looking at? Is it basically is? Did you also happen to notice? I think that might be the same thing that that or well, you heard you heard that earlier. So, um, what 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 is the problem? If you the DB query create and then you go to the parameter and there is I'm sorry, you're cutting in and out really bad, so Can you Maybe. Hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you check out the operation um, DB query creatable, mm -hmm. and then um, you have the parameters, and there's a table name str, there should be space. And this is the problem with all of the operations. Where should there be a space? Uh, between table name, and this is the name, and it should be of type string, right? So there table should name. be space, I think, between this. Okay, let's see. Let me see. What did you say this? Um. Oh, um, not yet. Not yet uh, on the top. On the top. I, I the used this one. Oh. It was working. Fine. I see. Here, right? This is what you're talking about. It looks like maybe we missed a. Um, let's. See. I think that's funny this looks correct the syntax is correct so something's something's funny in the that's weird yeah the syntax here is correct as far as it looks to me so yeah. something's wrong yeah, this, is, uh, this is a problem with uh, all of them all of them yeah this is a problem with all of them yeah Huh. Okay. Let's see. Let me check. Let's check the API docs to see. Um, this these work. Okay. So I bet here's what I bet it is. I bet it's because these are pluses, and the reason that they're pluses is because of the way the plugin docs get generated. Um, so we probably need to go change the headers around. Um, and I'm sorry, guys, but uh, I have to leave right at nine today. Um, so let's see. Uh, so let's make a note of this. Actually, can you make this issue, um, and then we'll move on to someone else here. Uh, thanks. Uh, issue with um, uh, incorrect formatting of arguments. Probably due to uh, okay. All right, who's next? So, hello. Hey, uh, I have this back to you. Hey, how's it going? I haven't gotten a chance to. I saw your. I saw that. Uh, I haven't gotten a chance to build build the docs yet here. Um. Okay, so uh, you can take your time with it. Okay. I, I'm fine with it. Cool, cool. Let's oh, yeah, so what next I should work on, like, if this is getting, till it is getting reviewed. Okay, let's see. Um, Did we come up with something last time? I think, no, yeah, you had the file source tutorial. Okay. Yeah. Um, Let's see, let's see. What else have we got here? Ah, man, I just saw a bunch of things, and I should have created issues. Um. Let's see. Uh, what were they? What were they? What were they? Um, 
trying to remember. Okay, okay, that's not helping. Um, well, um, one thing that would be good is, um, where's that guy? Oh, oh, I remember this. Okay, check this out. Um, so, okay, okay, so, what would be good to happen here, uh, where is the issue, there's an issue that does this, uh, okay, this is not critical, so, All right. So, uh, what this is is let me see if I can open that branch real quick. Right, let me just. Okay. All right, okay. Um, so for this example here, um, we had to pass um, inputs to op um, and, def and create all the definition instances. Um, what would be good is to modify um, diff mal slash base dot p or df slash base dot py so that op so that if op sees an empty uh, dict for inputs or let's see is not provided with inputs it uses inspect okay so what's going on here do I have caps lock on Okay, yeah, here, this is going to be helpful. So it uses inspect.signature, so you can check out this stuff here. Inspect.signature to look at the function's arguments. Uh, if uh, it should create definitions uh, for each argue um, using the data type as the stir of the data type uh, as the uh, primitive and the, um, you know, the name as the name um yeah so let's do this um also add some validation to make sure that we can only do this for uh, data types uh which are 
already primitives. So no, or let's see. Uh, okay, int float stir, etc. If there, uh, if there are any others, um, like you know, if you see, um, well, yeah. Oh no, no, no! What happened there? Fuck! Are you kidding me? Oh my god! What happened there? Ah, uh, well, okay. We have the recording, so. Uh, Maybe I'll just screenshot the recording and put a screenshot of that there. Damn it. Oh, yeah, I will check it out from the recording. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, and I'll update this issue. So, And then I have to run, guys, so I'm going to have to catch everyone else on Friday. Um, so, sure, sure, sure. Um, it is Sutanshu, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Next stuff issue. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't get to everyone today. I see Yash is on the call. Yash, I, uh, I haven't gotten the chance to kick off the subflow yet, but I'm going to try. I have, a, I have a long meeting right now, and I'm going to try to see if I can sneak in doing that um, during this meeting. So. No problem. It's up. Yeah, thanks. All right. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Have a good one. Night.